Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, it is Thursday. You know, it means it's crossover Thursday, so we got to pay attention to the next team up on the schedule, which is the San Francisco 49ers. It's the Battle of the Bay by way of Las Vegas. That's what I like to call it. Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker, host of Locked On 49ers, will join the show. We'll talk about the biggest storylines. We'll talk about the matchups. We'll give you the game flow, game predictions. And, oh, by the way, we'll talk about Derek Carr. Big news, obviously, going on with the silver and black. So it's a loaded, a locked and loaded crossover Thursday here on the Lockdown Raiders podcast, December 29th, 2022. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down. Welcome in, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen each and every day. Remember, you can find the Locked On Raider podcast free and available on all platforms. That includes YouTube. Thanks to my man Ari. He does a fantastic job each and every day making sure we're up on YouTube at Ari Produces on Twitter. And as mentioned, it is a crossover Thursday. So, of course, we got to keep with the schedule. We got to get into uh, this game with the San Francisco 49ers coming to Las Vegas, January 1, New Year's Day, right? What could go wrong? besides the fact that the Raiders don't have their quarterback in Derek Carr. So what I'm going to do, Raider Nation, because it is crossover Thursday, I got this edition of the show here for you. But I'm also going to do like the old school, like the old the old Lockdown Raider podcast that I used to do back in the day and give you a double disc. I got to hit you with another one. Uh, episode number two for today is going to be all about Derek Carr. Obviously, that's the biggest news when it comes to the Raiders, and it wouldn't be right if I didn't talk about it. So that'll come up in episode number two. But first, we got to get into this crossover edition with Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker. Before we do that, I want you to know today's edition of the Lockdown Raiders podcast, the crossover edition is presented by all our friends at Prize Picks. Prize picks is so much fun and it's very easy to play no competing with other players just you versus projections available you pick two to five players if they score more or less than their prize picks projection you can have to 10 times your money on your entry it literally could take less than 60 seconds to enter it is that easy i know you'll love prize picks check them out first time users can receive 100 percent instant deposit match up to 100 dollars with promo code locked on that's prizepicks.com promo code Locked on. So got a lot to get to coming up in the second edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast that I'll be dropping for today's show. We'll talk Derek Carr. We'll talk about the injury report. We'll talk about the roster moves. We'll talk about what's next. We'll hear from some guys in the Raiders locker room. That'll be in part two, the second edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for today. But right now we do have to jump into the crossover edition. So here's part one. Well, here's the whole show, matter of fact. Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. It's the crossover edition. Brian Peacock, Eric Crocker, host of Locked On 49ers, joining the show to talk all things Raiders and Niners. Q, the first thing, when I looked at the schedule this season, and I saw 49ers Raiders, like, okay, that's good. That's always going to be good. Then I saw it was on Jan 1. New <laughs> Year's Day, January 1st. Like, this this atmosphere could be could be a little bit nutty, I think, over the weekend in Las Vegas, No. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it, man. When I saw it on the schedule, New Year's Day, Las Vegas. Of course, we know how many people come to Las Vegas just to celebrate New Year's Eve anyway, ring in the new year. And then on top of that, you put a a football game the very next day. And it's, by the way, the Battle of the Bay. I like to call it the Battle of the Bay by way of Las Vegas, since the Raiders clearly <laughs> are no longer in uh, in the Bay. But it's still got that old school feel to it, right? That one that we always got excited about. Niners, Raiders, Raiders, Niners, whatever you want to call it. Obviously, it's taking a twist as of uh, as of Wednesday uh, afternoon. But, uh, man, it, it's something to get excited about. Just, again, seeing those two fan bases uh, interact with each other, intermingle with each other at the Legion Stadium on uh, on Sunday, January 1. So it should be an exciting time regardless. Q, the, with the benching of Derek Carr, and you kind of alluded to it there, and I know Brian Peacock opened up with kind of, you know, throwing that out there. Yeah. Is this something that they feel like a backup quarterback gives them a better chance to win? And no. have we seen the last of Carr with the uh, Las Vegas Raiders? I think no and yes. No, they don't think that Jared Stidham's going to give him the better chance to, to win. I don't, I don't see how they could possibly think that. I know he knows the system of Josh McDaniels. And, you know, there was rumors when they were still in New England that he could possibly be a starter after Tom Brady. We see that didn't happen. I don't think that they have any inkling that, that he's going to give him a better chance to win. I think this is a financial decision. Uh, if Derek Carr gets injured in one of the last two games of the season, $40 million basically becomes guaranteed, 
right? And I think that they're ready to move on from him. So to answer your second question, yes, I do think we've seen the last of Derek Carr in a Raiders uniform, which is kind of strange to end it the way that they have. But again, you guys know how it is, man. The NFL is a business. And if he gets injured and look, the Niners have some big uglies that are coming. And I say this with respect. They got some big uglies coming to town that could literally injure Derek Carr without trying to injure him. But it could end up that way. Right. And so if he gets injured somehow and they end up having to fork over 40 million dollars guaranteed for 32 million in 2023 and seven and a half million uh, for 2024. And then all of a sudden that slows down maybe their chance of being able to trade him. That, uh, you know, that that's something that I don't think that they were willing to take that chance. And so uh, ultimately they make the decision to sit him down. Jared Stidham will be the quarterback the next two weeks. Derek Carr is not even with the organization. He's left the organization for the next two weeks. He says he doesn't want to be a distraction, something that I guess the team and him wow. came to that agreement. So it kind of lets you know that the writing's on the wall. So, I mean, crazy things have happened in the offseason. Maybe they restructured the deal and they decide, okay, the best idea is to bring him back. But I would be shocked if that was the case. If anyone knows about the crazy things that can happen in the offseason at the quarterback position, it's, right. it's uh, people that cover the 49ers and, and San Francisco 49ers fans. I want to stay uh, real quick on the offensive side of the ball because I think a lot of the turmoil that's gone on over there and there's been losing and then you've had yep. some wins. You have to squeak out some wins and then you started hot, then lost the game late. But it's kind of overshadowed how great of a season Josh Jacobs has had. So Man. you got Josh Jacobs. He's been amazing. You have Devontae Adams. You know, what can the 49ers defense expect from those two guys coming this Sunday? Well, I'll tell you what, man, Josh Jacobs, you're right. It's been phenomenal. 1,500 plus yards. He's number one rusher in the league. And I'm hoping selfishly uh, that he continues to have success these final two games and wins the rushing title. I don't know if Derrick Henry's playing Thursday night against the Cowboys. He's number two in the, in the league in rushing. I don't think he is. I also know that the 49ers are really good at stopping the run. So, I mean, he's going to have his work cut out for him. But I think that they try to butter their bread by way of Josh Jacobs. He's a guy that has got it done all year long and has really put the team on his back and, and on his legs in, in particular. So I'm excited about seeing what he can do the next two weeks. But when you have Jarrett Stidham as your quarterback, I think the other teams also know that Josh Jacobs is going to be a heavy dose of, of the offense. And so they're going to be able to key in on him more than they already were. So there's there's a lot of things playing against Josh Jacobs these next two weeks and in particular on Sunday against the 49ers and Devontae Adams has been good. Um, he has good numbers. Uh, there's been a lot of hitting and missing when it comes to Derek Carr and him. So I wonder what's going to happen this week now with Jared Stidham at the quarterback position. Devontae was in the locker room uh, Wednesday afternoon and said he's going to do what he's supposed to do these final two weeks because that's what professionals do. I don't know what's going to happen with Devontae following those. I don't know if he comes back next year or what. Maybe he's back on the trade drip block. Who knows? Maybe he does come back, depending on who the quarterback is going to be in 2023. Uh, I just can't imagine that Jared Stidham and, and Devontae Adams are going to be clicking on all cylinders since Derek Carr and Devontae Adams haven't been clicking on all cylinders all season. So it's going to be interesting, to say the least, what this offense looks like on Sunday against a very good 49er defense. Yeah, you know, uh, the 49ers defense has become sort of the grim reaper this year. They've gotten coaches fired. They've gotten, they've gotten quarterbacks <laughs> benched. And that doesn't bode well for Jarrett Stidham in his first oh. start here against that 49ers defense. And it also doesn't bode well for Josh Jacobs. And the 49ers haven't given up a 60-yard a rusher yet this season. Well, they've had a 58 and a 59, I believe. There you but go. Last week it was 22 carries for 58 yards for – uh, Brian Robinson of the Washington Commanders. And I know Josh Jacobs is one of the better running backs they've faced this year, but it's talking about getting the guy hurt, right? Like yeah. that's when your assets going into next year, you don't want to get Josh Jacobs hurt either. And if he's your only offense, and I don't know how much respect the 49ers secondary and D'Amico Ryan's defense coordinator is going to have for Jared Stidham's uh, passing game for the Raiders, but yeah, and it doesn't bode well. And the, the, all the smart folks in your town that, that do a good job of making a lot of money, not losing a lot of money, think that this went from about a five and a half point game to uh, a 10 plus point yeah. game in the 49ers favor that happened real quick right it happened yeah. immediately you know even before it was officially announced that car was being benched all of a sudden you see the line moving you're thinking okay i know what this means so yeah i mean that's the thing and, and look the only thing you can do is go into this game with what you do best and I'm, I'm sorry, that's Josh Jacobs and and hoping that they can get Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro involved in the offense more than they have the past couple weeks. And then Devontae Adams as well. And again, I don't know what Jarrett Stidham's going to look like. He looked great in the preseason, but that was with, you know, Keelan Cole as his wide receiver and Demarcus Robinson as his wide receiver. You didn't see Devontae Adams. You didn't really see Josh Jacobs. You saw a bunch of guys that were twos and threes going out there playing against twos and threes. And I mean, that's just what it is. So Stidham will have a chance. He knows the offense. We'll see. 
you know, we'll see what it looks like, but uh, I don't expect it to be looking great. You know, when it comes to Josh Jacobs, you think that he's going to be back in 2023. I would, I would suspect that the Raiders bring him back, but he's a free agent. So to bring him back, they may have to franchise him. They may have to, you know, dump a boatload of money in his, in his lap. Uh, I don't know. Right. I mean, I, I want him again, selfishly as a Josh Jacobs fan, I want to see him return in 2023, but it's not guaranteed. So I could see these guys, you know, running him out there, let him, let him run the ball. Uh, maybe they have one of their backup running backs, maybe a Brandon Bolden, maybe a Zamir White who they drafted in the fourth round if he's healthy, maybe a Britton Brown who they drafted in the seventh round. I don't know. I don't know what the case may be, but I do know the last few games, Josh Jacobs has been a captain voted on by his players or his teammates that were captains. They said, hey, Josh, we need to make Josh Jacobs a captain for the rest of the season. So that was announced to us a couple weeks ago. So maybe, you know, the Raiders have plans on bringing him back and they don't want to use him too much this uh, the, the rest of the season. But again, selfishly, I want to see him run the ball because I want to see him uh, win that rushing title. And I think that that'd be a nice feather in the cap for Josh, who's having a career year with the Raiders. Yeah, you're we've try talked absolutely. a lot about, uh, ahead, say, we, we, we've talked a lot about, you know, Josh Jenkins and the phenomenal season that he's having. We touched on uh, Devontae Adams as well. One guy that we haven't really touched on a whole lot is a guy that was potentially the best tight end in the league, Darren Waller. And I know he's been dealing with injuries and different things this season, but what is, what's it looking like with Waller? Uh, this is not what I expected from him uh, heading into this season. When, when you looked on paper at the Las Vegas Raiders, it was like, man, you got Josh Jacobs. You got mm-hmm. Hunter Renfro, Devontae Adams, Darren Waller, and Derek Carr. You know, he can just kind of, you know, steady this ship and, and, and hit the, these different guys. And Waller has kind of been a little, a little MIA, I, I, yeah. if I should say. No, he has. And Raider Nation has been wondering where Darren Waller has been. I mean, he was out for a long time with the hamstring after he got his contract extension. That made Raider Nation very angry because it's like, wait a minute, if you were going to, you know, be out with a hamstring. uh, And a lot of people didn't think that that was, you know, realistic. But, you know, we've all played sports. We've all played. Well, not all of us have played at a high level, but Croc, you know about playing at a high level. You have a hammy, you got a hammy. Right. I mean, it's just it is what it is. He missed a lot of time with that hamstring. Last week against Pittsburgh, he played 21 snaps. That was a game. I thought he should have played a lot more. You know, I mean, again, I get I get trying to get back into game shape, but, man, that was a game I thought he could have ate in. And with the conditions and everything, I thought he could have been a big factor. I think he could be a big factor in this game. I don't know how much the Raiders are going to let him burn. I don't know how many snaps he's going to get. 21 is not enough for me. Hunter Renfro came back from injury as well. They both were on, on IR at some point this season. So, you know, I wanted to see what they were going to look like these final four games to see what this offense looked like with everybody and that includes Derek Carr, obviously that's not going to happen. So now we see Adams, Waller, Renfro, Jacobs, possibly with Jarrett Stidham. So, I mean, it's just a big question. But, again, this is a game where obviously you got to respect Darren Waller because, as you mentioned, one of the better tight ends in the league just hasn't been the season that anyone expected it to be, and most of it has been because of hamstring injuries. Now, look, I know Croc's a great athlete and played at a high level, but uh, Q, I can tell you're – an athlete and look, don't talk bad about the San Francisco slow pitch softball C league either. Okay. Because uh, there's some <laughs> athletes out there that I compete with every single week. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, I was talk- softball too, man. I was the softball. Yeah. I felt like a softball King, man. So I'm good. I'm with you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, we got more storylines, more key matchups, and of course, some predictions for week 17, new year's day, 49ers Raiders coming up next. Today's episode of Locked On 49ers and Locked On Raiders is brought to you by Audible. Audible is releasing a slate of new football podcasts we're sure you are going to love. That's why you'll be able to find uh, an episode of The League available as a bonus episode on Locked On NFL, narrated by Super Bowl champion and legendary smack talker Richard Sherman and sports broadcaster and rising star Taylor Rooks. The League is an eight-part docuseries about the most bizarre, inspirational, and unlikely stories connected to America's favorite sport, pro football. You won't want to miss these untold stories spanning from the 1940s all the way through present day. Each story offers equal parts history, entertainment, and social commentary. And you know Richard Sherman is going to come with some hot takes. Head over to Locked On NFL for a bonus episode of The League. Tons of other great content, by the way, on Locked On NFL. You can find The League and all the other great football podcasts coming out from Audible. Catch the full series wherever you get your podcasts. Available now, Audible. Get in the game. Thanks again, everybody, for making Locked On 49ers and Locked On Raiders your first listen every day. Make sure you check out Locked On Sports today. The biggest stories around the sports world in 20 minutes or less, plus instant reactions, game recaps, 
and Locked On's Take of the Day. You'll find fantastic hosts from around the network like Q Myers and Eric Crocker and Brian Peacock. All the time popping up on Locked On Sports today. Available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, I I, I, I kind of want to talk about Derek Carr just a little bit more. And I know the 49ers listeners want to talk about this game, but this is the biggest story for, yeah, uh, I think, for a sure. lot of 49ers fans too. And, and I think the 49ers fans want to have some, you know, 49ers and Raiders, when they get together, you want to have the bragging rights over, yeah, you know, so absolutely. many 49ers fans know a lot of Raiders fans. So many Ra- Raiders fans know a lot of 49ers fans, you know, so uh, they want to be able to talk to each other about their teams um when it comes to Derek Carr uh, like he's been such a solid player but never like reached the the tier tier where I think probably a lot of Raiders fans want him to be and at times he would look like he was gonna get there right and then the next year is not as good and then you're like oh man do you, do you move on from Derek Carr but then next year he has a good year right and it's, it's almost like a, an odd year even year thing it seems like at some point now I'm sure you can speak to that Q but my big question with Carr is he's been through like half a dozen head coaches is he right. a coach killer because he's so close to that level, but then they never win as much as they expect with a good quarterback? Or is he a victim of a bad organization? Like, I can't figure out which one Derek Carr is. Yeah, I, I honestly think he's probably a victim of a bad organization, but he also has faults in it, if that makes any sense. I, I, I kind of say about Derek Carr, when I, when I really sum up what his career has been with the silver and black, I call him the stabilizer. Because there was a big carousel of quarterbacks that came to the organization between Rich Gannon and Derek Carr. And it was just a bunch of dudes, right? There was guys that had some names, but they were at the end of their career. There was other guys that didn't have names that were drafted that weren't worth the salt. I mean, it was just carousel after carousel. It was like a a, a merry-go-round. It was just like everyone get a turn. It was terrible, right? And then he stabilized the position for the last nine years. But, guys, we know in the NFL, if you're not winning more times than not, you're not around nine years, right? And and he wasn't winning. And, again, I'm not going to ever put all that on him. I know that there was a lot of real lean years where that team had no opportunity to win. Like the first couple years he was in the league with Dennis Allen, there was no chance they were going to win. I mean, really, that was a tear down and rebuild, and he just happened to be the quarterback that was there. And, I mean, but he he gave you hope. I think, as, I think Raider Nation said it the best on my radio show on Wednesday. He gave the, the the fan base hope that, okay, maybe they found their guy. And obviously he reached his, I think, his peak in 2016 when they were a really good team and he broke his uh, fibula on Christmas Eve against the Colts at the Coliseum. And I remember walking out of the Coliseum and it was quiet, man. You could hear a pin drop in that place because everyone knew, even though they won that game and they were going to the playoffs that year, that they didn't have a chance. And they didn't, right? I mean, whoever they threw out there didn't have a chance. Connor Cook was the guy, matter of fact. He was a rookie. He got his first start in the playoffs against the Texans. That didn't go very well. Only been to the playoffs twice in his whole career. And once he didn't even get to play because he was injured in 2016. I think after that, it changed the mentality of Derek Carr from, you know, not only a gunslinger, but also a guy that ran the ball a lot. I mean, he would run around the yard and keep plays alive. He stopped doing that. And a lot of that, I believe, had to do with the confidence that he did not have after breaking his fibula. And, you know, he'd really rather stay in the pocket and be that quarterback. And so everyone used to get frustrated that he wasn't a runner anymore and wouldn't run around the yard and just keep plays alive. So I just think that he reached his peak in 2016. He did the best he could. Last season, he got the Raiders to the playoffs, guided them through hell and high waters, (laughs) to say the least. But, you know, a lot of things fell in the right way for the Raiders to get that playoff berth in 2021. And this year under Joshua Daniels, it just hasn't cut it. It just hasn't happened. And it's, it's been one of those situations where, you know, you kind of felt the writing was on the wall. Josh McDaniels is there. Dave Ziegler's there. And they want to get their guy. And clearly it's not Derek Carr. So we'll see what happens. You know, I always say you can have a plan or you can have the plan. For Josh McDaniels and company, they better have the plan now that they've benched the best thing that the Raiders have had at quarterback in a very long time. So, yeah, it's really interesting because this week's game, we've got Jarrett Stidham, who was supposed to be the heir to Tom Brady, to, and he's playing against the next Tom Brady in Brock Purdy, the seventh (laughs) round pick by the San Francisco 49ers. The dude has been phenomenal. It's been unreal. Croc, that's like, we, because every week when we do the crossovers, one of the first things we're supposed to talk about is the biggest storyline. Yeah. And the biggest storyline for the 49ers for two straight calendar years has been the quarterback. But the thing is, it's always been a different quarterback, even though all three quarterbacks are still here now. But now it's Brock Purdy and it's been right. it's been an amazing run. Croc, can you can you tell the Raiders what they're about to expect from Brock Purdy Sunday? I, I think Brock Purdy can probably be very frustrating for opposing defenses because you watch him and it's like, well, he doesn't have the biggest arm and maybe he's not the sexiest of players. But I'll tell you what he always does. 
exactly what he's supposed to do. And some, if there's a guy that's open, he's going to hit that guy. And when you're watching Kyle Shanahan's offense, those guys are going to be open. When you think you have him in the pocket, he spins out of it. There was one play where he was sprinting out left. He did like this little hop skip, spun yeah. around in a circle, threw the ball out of bounds. And it was just like, he's just kind of toying with defenses at this point. There were some quick RPOs where he stopped, dropped that elbow, slot down, and threw it around guys. Like, he has made... Probably every throw that Kyle can ask him to make, like, hey, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. And he's almost like a robot and in a good way because when it's there, he's going to hit it. And when it's not there, maybe he's rushed. He has enough mobility to get out of the pocket and make a play on the move. So he's been really good. He stretched the ball down the field. A lot of 49er fans have been wanting to get that. And we haven't gotten it from Jimmy Garoppolo. Obviously, he's drafted Trey Lance to be that guy. But right now, it's Brock Purdy, man. And he's, he's playing very well. He's been very efficient. He's been pretty accurate. He's taking good care of the ball. Uh, throughout these games as well, it's been really fun and surprising watching it every week. We're just wondering, like, okay, is going to continue? Like, can he keep playing at this level, which I think on paper right now is one of the best in the league during this uh, three-game stretch? Croc, let me ask you this. When it comes to Brock Purdy and him doing everything that you just mentioned, and I've, I've been very impressed from a distance. I also watched him when he was at Iowa State when I was covering the Big 12. I thought he was pretty good there with David Montgomery and, of course, uh, you know, the coaching staff, Matt Campbell and company. But – with that 49er defense that we talked about and the run game and, oh, this guy named Christian McCaffrey, who's more than a runner, as you guys very well know, how much has that made it more comfortable for him just to slide in and be him and not have to do too much? I always talk a whole lot about the time clock, the mental time clock, right? And, you know, I kind of compare it to a defensive back. If you have the line of scrimmage against, let's say, Devontae Adams and he beats you off of the line of scrimmage, well, your clock gets, starts to get a little sped up and now your technique goes out the window. Well, it's been the opposite for Brock Purdy. I think for the most part, he's been able to play very comfortable because, you know, hey, my defense, they're going to get stops. So I don't really have to force anything. I don't have to make any bad throws. I don't have to be the guy. I don't have to throw into these super tight windows all the time, maybe here and there. But for the most part, things are kind of schemed to a point where if I just execute the offense, I'm in good hands. And that defense makes it to where, hey, there's no rush with anything. So I think it helps when something's not there. You know, you got Christian McCaffrey. Didn't have the catches last week. I believe he only had two. Uh, prior to that, felt like he was getting six to eight catches every week. Uh, even from Brock Purdy, who's using him as a check down guy, as well as uh, Jimmy Garoppolo did the same thing. So, it, it I mean, obviously it helps to be in this type of sit scenario where, you know, he threw, I think Kittle has caught four, like three or four touchdowns from him in, in, the, in the last two games, right? And yeah. in those two start, in those two games, one was a busted coverage, guy wide open against Seattle, throws it to him. I, I don't think anybody was within a, what, 10 to 15 yard radius of George Kittle, he's wide open, he catches it, runs in for a touchdown. Another one was like this screen where he faked the screen left, faked the screen right, and then throws it to George Kittle, wide open, and he runs in, makes guys miss, runs in for a touchdown. And then he had two touchdowns last week where one, it was just a regular bootleg, he threw the ball about five yards to a wide open George Kittle, he makes everybody miss, runs into the end zone, and then he had another touchdown right after halftime, which it was a big ball down the field where – I don't know where the safety was, but George Kittle, wide open, nobody around him, touchdown. So uh, he's done a really good job of kind of taking advantage of what's there. And I think, you know, as a quarterback of your team, that's all you can really ask for. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Well, again, what, he, what he's been able to do has been, you know, obviously it's been uh, phenomenal. And, and look, that, that 49ers defensive line is, is obviously impressive. And I'm interested to see what it looks like, you know, what the 49ers defensive line looks like against that Raiders offensive line with Jarrett Stidham at the quarterback position, who obviously is a little bit more athletic, is going to be willing to run a little bit more than Derek Carr would. But uh, when it comes down to quarterback to quarterback, obviously D.C. is the better option. So not sure if that 49er defense is going to be licking their chops, how they're feeling about this matchup now that they know who the quarterback is. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they all square up with each other. The tough thing for opposing teams when it comes to the 49ers is they really want to make you one-dimensional. And I thought Washington held on as long as they could, right? We talked about Robinson having like 22 carries for less than 60 yards, which is kind of crazy to think about it that way. But the fact that he had 22 carries in that game lets you know, like, they tried to hold with it. They did not want to become one-dimensional. 49ers, they're going to try to do that with Stidham. And once they do that, 49ers have who? 
a lot of us believe, and I think a lot of media members are jumping on board with that as well. The defensive player of the year on the other side and Nick Bosa. And I know, you know, got Max Crosby over there with the Raiders. He's no slouch. Really good. Actually got um, an all-pro bid over Nick Bosa last year. But this year right now, it would be hard to find a defensive player playing better than Nick Bosa. And what he would do, especially if you start to get one-dimensional, it it it'd make life, life pretty hard for anybody who's behind that center. Yeah, and the thing with Max Crosby, he's having a phenomenal season, as you mentioned, but he doesn't have, you know, Eric Armstead in the middle. He doesn't have, you know, a bookend guy. It's him. And Chandler Jones was put on IR on Wednesday, so he's done. He went out of the game on Christmas Eve with the elbow injury. I mean, it's slim pickings when it comes to the Raiders and the defensive line. So it's literally Max Crosby and others, and or Max Crosby and them. Isn't that what Dion says? So-and-so and them? That's what it is. It's Max Crosby and them. So we'll see who shows up to the party. But, yeah, man, between Bosa, Armstead, and, and everyone else that the 49ers they have. They got Ken Law back. And, yeah, and they really Kinlaw. just got Armstead back. Um, he missed a lot of the season. But getting him back, getting Ken Law back, he had limited snaps last game. Uh, just some of the other guys. who he's chipped in. Yeah. He's done well. But, you know, it's been a lot on Nick Bosa as well. But somehow he just – they try to chip him. They they draw. He draws a lot of attention. They're running guys at him, and he just makes guys miss. Has good hands. Gets a sack and gets up and does his little shrug. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 having a hell of a season. So there you go. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of shrugging from Nick Bosa this year. Well, at least Chandler Jones got to give the the Raiders their highlight of the season with his touchdown. Right. To beat the yep. Patriots a couple of weeks ago, I was um, wild. I was insane sitting in the Legion Stadium watching that happen. I, I just, I, I reached over. You guys know what it's like in the press box, man. There's not supposed to be any reaction. It's supposed to be like yeah. emotionless. I reached over to whoever was sitting next to me, and I promise you, I still don't know who was sitting next to me. And I just grabbed their arm. and was like, "Did I just see that? What happened? What was Is that? Any of that stuff legal? <laughs> right? I mean, I just, I had no idea what I was seeing. So that was probably the highlight of Chandler Jones' Raider career. And who knows what happens next year if he's back or not? But man, that was wild that was insane and maybe that's the biggest highlight of the year so far this year for the silver and black with these two games left a lot of 49er fans enjoyed seeing mac jones get mushed into the ground as well so. yeah yeah that, that was a tough one for 49ers fans he's like oh the raiders won but mac jones because everyone hated mac jones before the draft they didn't want it to be mac jones right pick. all right we got to make some predictions here guys next to finish up this thursday crossover 49ers raiders next BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting information, statistics, news, and analysis this season. Seeing that BetOnline uh, number move quite a bit from five and a half to six to all of a sudden 10. And who knows, by the time you guys listen to this podcast, it might be 12 points that the 49ers are favored against the Raiders on New Year's Day in Las Vegas. You can find all the latest odds and trends every week for the NFL. Tons of prop bets. Uh, every professional and amateur league out there as well. Not just NFL football. We've got college bowl season, college basketball, NBA basketball, uh, soccer, golf, combat sports, motor sports, even esports. You name it. They've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, which I'm sure you do, if you're listening to this show, you can even find those as well at BetOnline. Always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information. Head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Make sure you are informed at Bet Online before you make those bets. Also at Bet Online, Bet Online, where the game starts. I'm painting a little picture here, and especially with New Year's coming up. Like, this is so important, guys. And did you know that driving high is considered driving under the influence? That's right. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law in every state, even in those states where marijuana might be legal so uh, make sure if you're going out you're partying on new year's make sure you get your drive home safe get that set up in advance don't even take your car don't even take your keys don't even give yourself the opportunity at night to drive home drunk or drive home high just go have a good time not even worry about it right it's not even worth it and if you think law enforcement officers can't tell when you're driving high you're wrong your friends can tell your co-workers can tell even your parents can tell everyone can tell so what makes you think law enforcement officers aren't going to be able to tell that you're driving under the influence? Your response time and uh, changes when you are high. You, you change how you perceive time and speed. So even if you think you're fine to drive when you're high, you're not. Bottom line is, if you feel different, you drive different. And driving high is driving under the influence. So remember, drive high, get a DUI paid for by the NHTS. All right. Before I make my prediction here, Q, I need to know what's the state of the Raiders D our offensive line? Because when when coming into the season, one of the and, and I do the national show, Peacock and Williamson yep. NFL show. 
And I picked the Raiders to finish last in the AFC West. And there were some Raiders fans that came at me a little bit. And they're like, yo, what do you, why do you think that? And I was like, I don't like the offensive line. I don't like the defensive secondary. And I think that might be a big problem. And there's been a, a whirlwind of a season, but I, I don't think I was necessarily wrong on those two parts. And those are two main reasons why I think the 49ers still can beat the, the, uh, the Raiders here in week 17, especially when you got a guy like, Nick Bosa that's that's trying to get to that 20 sack threshold, trying to win defensive player of the year. He has been playing at a phenomenal le level. I think last week was the best I've seen him play. Just an animal out there. So who's going to be blocking Nick Bosa before I make my predictions? Well, I'll tell you, the offensive line was a big suspect, uh, you know, question mark when uh, when the season started and they had a rotation of guys and, you know, just trying this, trying that, hoping that they could find something that that fit five guys that fit together. They found it now. You know, they have Colton Miller at the left tackle position. He's the constant, constant. He was the former first-round pick. He's actually got a contract extension. So he's been that guy at that left tackle position. Uh, they moved Dylan Parham, who's the uh, third-round pick out of Memphis. Uh, they slid him into that left guard position. He's been solid. He was banged up a couple weeks ago, but he's, he's back now. He's looking pretty good. He did get a little bit of welcome to the league rookie. Uh, on Christmas Eve against Cam Hayward and the Steelers because, well, they just uh, wrecked the game following the first drive of the game. So uh, he's been a bright spot. Andre James is at the center position. He's okay. I don't want to say he's all pro or anything. I mean, he's. I think he's getting better. Uh, that interior of the defense or the Raiders offensive line could definitely still need improving. Alex Bars has been a career journeyman, but he's been decent. And then, you know, you've kind of got question marks. Jermaine Illuminor at that right tackle position. Sometimes they bring Thayer Mumford in, who's a seventh-round pick at Ohio State as a jumbo package, basically another tight end. Uh, but they just use him to block. They're not throwing any passes to him. So, I mean, those are kind of the casting characters of the guys. They've been really good when it comes to run blocking. I'll give them that. They've improved a lot when it comes to run blocking. Their pass blocking has been okay. It uh, hasn't been great. And, again, on Christmas Eve, they really um, given a – big healthy dose of cam hayward that's how he ended up winning afc defensive player of the week award uh, just because he was that stinking good so he had a hell of a game and uh you know they've got to obviously be a lot better with that raider uh, that uh 49 excuse me defensive line coming to town but uh they're not as bad as they were when the season started when you made that prediction uh but they're not you know they're not great they're not you know some solid unit they they still need a lot of work to to improve i was a big fan of dylan parham by the way i was hoping the niners were going to be able to snag you at at pick 92 and I think he went about five picks ahead of him to the Raiders there in the third round so I thought that was a nice selection very versatile player nice to know that he's settling in there at left guard mm -hmm. for the Raiders he's played all three positions at some point this season he played left guard he played center and he played right guard I mean that dude like you said universal man he's like a Swiss army knife he could do it all he's, he's been solid you know the 49ers have had some trouble in recent years with more athletic quarterbacks, guys that run around and buy some time and are able to make a play. Now, if Jared Stidham can do that and maybe find Devontae Adams for some big plays and the 49ers have a couple of times here, um, had some coverage busts and given up some big plays, I think that's the path for the Raiders to maybe shock and upset the 49ers at home. And, and you like those home underdog bets sometimes. And maybe there's an unpreparedness for Jarrett Stidham because the film's not out there and they don't know right. exactly what the offense is going to look like, but it's really hard for me to predict that the Raiders are going to win this football game. And I've even been a little bit uh, like hesitant to pick the 49ers big in some of these games recently and thought, well, you know, maybe they'll win, but not cover a big number. That's, you know, yeah. they had a decent amount of times. It's seven year. points. And it, like, and they, they're still doing it. So like, it's hard for me not to pick for the 49ers, no matter what the number is to go out there and win big with some of the games they played with how hard it is to score on that defense and what Brock Purdy's offense has been able to do. The 49ers have been able to run the ball. They've been able to throw the ball. They've been able to score touchdowns, uh, you know, keep turnovers down. So it's been pretty phenomenal. And I, I can't believe what I'm watching here with Brock Purdy. And uh, I'm, I'm sort of a believer now, and I, I don't see any reason why they can't do it again. So I'm going to go ahead and, and take the 49ers to win this one by a couple of scores. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, again, I, I think that even with Derek Carr, uh, I was definitely believing that the 49ers were going to come into Allegiant Stadium and win the game. I just, uh, again, on the strength of that defense. Um, you know, now that it's up to about a 10-point spread, and who knows, it might be more by the time kickoff happens on Sunday. Uh, you know, that, that may be a little hard to cover only because it's New Year's and in Vegas. And the Raiders' defense, I got to give them credit. They have played better uh, the last three or four games. I know that they gave up that 98-yard drive to – uh, to Baker Mayfield and the Rams a couple weeks ago, Thursday night football. And, you know, of course, uh, you saw what, what uh, Pickett was able to do on Christmas Eve uh, at the end of the game. But for the most part, I mean, they've done pretty well. So I'm going to assume that they're going to continue to play with some pride and they know what the Battle of the Bay stands for. 
And I know it's not necessarily the same thing as the Battle of the Bay, but, you know, I say by way of Vegas. So I think that they'll go out there and play with some pride and some energy and, you know, have, maybe have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. I still think the 49ers win. Uh, it might be a little bit closer than we expect for the reasons that you said as well, right? Because the tape's not out on Stidham. He is a little bit mobile. They still have weapons out there. And who knows? You know, it's New Year's Day in Vegas. Who knows what happens, right? I mean, crazy things happen on New Year's Day anywhere. Yeah. But in Vegas, it's a whole different ball game, right? So, I mean, you never know. You never know what can happen. I'm sure curfew will be early for these guys. But, I mean, it's still Vegas. You know what happens when teams go to Miami. Sometimes things happen. They enjoy Miami too much. Maybe these guys will enjoy Vegas too much. I, I don't know. I, I think that the 49ers win the game, no doubt. Uh, it just might be a little bit closer than we all expect. Yeah, that's typically kind of been our approach. Peacock and I have been more even kill uh, mm -hmm. when delivering kind of you know this content to the San Francisco 49er fan base and and oh you know we'll, we'll see and we kind of justify how it could be a close game. I'm yeah. kind of done doing that now because every week the 49ers are beating these teams by two scores. Um, gotcha. I don't think it'd be any different. And I, it comes off very disrespectful to the Las Vegas Raiders, but. Now, at this point, after seeing it for eight straight weeks and, and kind of how they play, especially against a team that they should beat, right? I'd say for the most part over this game, maybe maybe the Dolphins, because the Dolphins, they're on the four-game skid now. 49ers kind of started that skid. But aside from that, a lot of the teams you're thinking, like, well, yeah, you know, 49ers should handle them, but I, it might get close, and you kind of justify why it can. But they've handled all these teams by two scores for the most part. Uh, I, I don't think it would be any different playing against Stidham and these guys. It is going to be hard to kind of find maybe some – Film on them. Maybe you have to go back to New England days and, and watch what that looked like uh, with their head coach, McDaniel. But uh, 49ers are going to be tough. And if Brock Purdy continues to play how he has played, yeah, you, you, can't, you cannot be undisciplined as a defense because he will find the open guy. I talked about it earlier, all those, you know, throwing it to George Kittle wide open. Well, the 49ers, other quarterbacks have had those opportunities. Trey Lance missed a wide open tight end week one uh, against the Bears. That game might have been a little different. Jimmy Garoppolo, you, you watch all 22, you see several times where he could have pulled the trigger on a guy running down the field, beating a guy, and he doesn't do it. Brock Purdy, he is doing it every single time. And that's something that team is going to worry about. So if the Raiders, we talked a little bit about their secondary, if they come in here and they're a little undisciplined, yeah, it, it could be it could be a long day for the team. So it, it was nine and a half points the last time I checked. I, I take 49ers in the points. There you go. And like I said, I, I wouldn't blame you, and I would not take it disrespectfully at all either. <laughs> you know, I, I, hey, man, it, it makes all the sense in the world. I'll tell you right now, the, the Postal Raider Nation, they all think it's going to be a big-time blowout on Sunday. So nothing is going to be taken disrespectfully at all from me or from Raider Nation because, again, I mean, the 49ers are already playing uh, a great style of ball, and then you add the, the, the mix that Jarrett Stidham is now the quarterback. And, yeah, I mean, it's just – it's it, the recipe is there for a big-time blowout. So, you know. Just saying that the 49ers are win is, is going to win this game is almost like a, a no-brainer. Uh, one of those, yeah, okay, tell me something I didn't know type moments. So, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. But uh, the wheels keep rolling, and that's what that's why they play the games, right? We'll see what happens. That's right. And I, I think if there's anybody who should not be shocked by an NFL outcome, it's probably us with what's <laughs> gone on in the last couple of years with the franchises that we cover. And by the way, I like that. So Battle of the Bay by way of Las Vegas, it, it's probably faster to fly from Oakland to Las Vegas than to drive to, you know, Levi Stadium anyway. So oh, yeah, it's, no man. doubt, no <laughs> doubt. It's probably easier to get out of Allegiant Stadium than it is Levi's Stadium. I hate trying to get out of that damn parking lot, yeah. man. There, at Great America, it is a pain. <laughs> yeah, I, I went to the Pac-12 Championship game mm. at Allegiant Stadium, and uh, yeah. yeah, amazing design. Love yeah. the inside. It reminded me more of a traditional stadium, but really nice, clean, nice TV. You can kind of see, you know, like the, the windows up there and everything, yeah. but. It wasn't like the Cowboys, which you see, it's like it feels like a whole lot of extra stuff going on. The right. SoFi Stadium, which I think is really nice with the design, the thing in the middle, but it doesn't remind me of like a traditional right. football stadium. The, the Raiders, man, they got it right. The outside's awesome. The inside, great. They had this nice like brisket sandwich. And they I play on grass. On <laughs> <laughs> and they play on grass. That's that's the best part of it. Yeah. On the grass field. You got to be able to play on the grass. It's so important. All right. Uh, okay. Fantastic stuff. Q, appreciate you, man. Uh, Croc and I will be back with Locked On 49ers tomorrow, finishing up the week. Q will be doing the same. And probably, uh, who knows? You, got, you probably got to do an extra episode, too. Because I got overtime to do stuff. tonight, brother. I got overtime. <laughs> extra episodes of Locked On Raiders, Derek Carr news, crazy 
business yep. going on with the Las Vegas Raiders. Fantastic stuff. Make sure you are subscribed up to everything here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Maybe go check out Croc doing Locked On NFL Draft and me on the Peacock and Williamson NFL there Show. Locked On NFL, of course, as well. So uh, thanks, everybody, and talk to you next time right here on the Locked On Podcast Network.